Hello. It's a cold day here in New England and I'm Sandra, if you haven't guessed. I'm live in the bird sanctuary. So hopefully you can see what I have going on behind me. Everybody needs a hobby, right? And I came on to tell you what I've been doing. It's been quite a crazy last many months since last March. And as you may or may not know, last um, seen on my day job at Marion's Hospitality, cooking for the race teams was in March of 2020 when COVID hit and the races couldn't happen. And unfortunately to my friends in racing, we haven't been able to cook and supply meals under a tent. So our business that mom and I have had for over the past 30 years, we had to hit the pause button until the day comes that the world is safe again and we can have people gathered under a tent having some buffets. So the business is Marion's Hospitality and we still have one of the signs and I was going to put it right here behind me. I have been safe and with mom. I've relocated to be with my mom, which is just the best place to be. My aunt is still in our house in Massachusetts taking care of our cat, Harry, but I'm with mom. And for Christmas, I gave her these bird feeders that you see behind me. And I thought it would just be fun to watch some birds, right? And I'm not, or I wasn't a really big bird fan, but I thought it'd be nice to take care of some of God's little creatures and, and feed them. Well, what started as a gift for mom, it really became a gift for me. Of course, I love mom and I cook for her every day. And of course we eat well and have good, great conversations and things. I didn't know the difference that having this hobby of mine would have. So, Thankfully, I didn't record any earlier because it's like JFK or Heathrow International Airport when the sun is up. There are hundreds of birds, it seems. We've got two bird feeders here, and then over on this side, you can see a red one hanging. The red one I've had to move from different place to place because we have four pesky squirrels, sometimes five. And I keep moving the location of that red one because the squirrels can jump to it and get in it. So they have figured a way to jump six or seven feet from a tree to that red one, hang on to it for dear life, and then eat the sunflower seeds that are there. They're God's creatures too, so we let them do that. The other two green ones are squirrel proof ones. And it's really fun to watch because the squirrels with all their might, they try to hang on to it. But when they hang on to the place the birds sit, the um, it closes off the feeding mechanism. So it's pretty, pretty funny to watch. <laughs> but they never give up. They think sometime it's gonna work and they're gonna get food. I think it was Einstein that said, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over, expecting a different result. Well, there's no Einstein for squirrels, so they didn't get the memo. There's also a suet feeder that looks like a little birdhouse, and then you can't see it, but on either side here, we've got some suet feeders. And there's been woodpeckers, and oh my God, are they fun to watch. They're kind of black and white bodies and then a bright red head. We've got cardinals, we've got chickadees, we've got something called um, a dark-eyed junco. We've got tons of those. We've got, <laughs> it's called tufted titmouse. <laughs> it's a little gray bird with a little tuft. We've seen um, these swallows and just like all kinds of things. So I've turned into, um, I don't wanna say a bird junkie cause that's not really quite appropriate, but I found that having this little hobby, of course it's providing for something in nature cause winter is the toughest time for birds. And there's a big population of birds and squirrels even that die in the winter time because of starvation. And then, oh, you'll get a kick out of this too. You see the bird bath, $40 on Amazon, but of course, we're in New England, it freezes, another $40. I've got a heater for the water in the bird bath because the birds need water too. So while you might think I'm crazy, it is such a great thing to have not only the responsibility of caring for these little things, but to be able to watch them and how good it is for my mind 
you know, many of you know that I've been running some online classes with my good friends, Scott and Carrie and Phil and Darren. And it's wonderful because it's an opportunity to, to quiet the mind. And if you know me, you know, I wrote a book called We Don't Die, A Skeptic's Discovery of Life After Death. And I've got two radio shows now about the afterlife, which are pretty amazing. The first one, um, We Don't Die Radio, I have, I believe, 356 episodes of that now, helping people through grief, helping people believe in a bigger picture and help people live a more powerful life. And oh gosh, you know, life's been really hard for us and I don't think it was meant to be easy, but with what's going on with COVID right now, it's definitely a rocky road that many of us have had our lives turn upside down. Thankfully, we're able to pay the bills and that's great. And you know, the last 30 years have gone by pretty fast having our, my business with my mom, which has been wonderful. But when we were at the racetrack, we spent so much time working and didn't have that quality of time together. So now for all of you who don't have your parents still around, um, I totally understand how important it is to be with and love and listen and hold hands and laugh and drink wine with somebody as cool as my mom because she's, she's pretty great. Um, Anyways, other things that I have going on that kind of turned up just this past several months is the big radio show, Coast to Coast AM, which has something like 8 million nightly listeners. They asked me to do a radio show on iHeartRadio and on the afterlife, and it's really been an honor. We have now 17 episodes recorded. I think there's only 13 or 14 that have aired but out of all the 350 some episodes that I've done of the other show, it's like putting together the best of the best of what I've learned to help, help people believe in a bigger picture. Yes, you know, we are on an earth that is spinning in the universe when there's millions and millions of stars like our sun and the never ending universe. Huge is an understatement, but to think that our life is all that there is and there can't possibly be anything else. You know, a lot of people buy into that. I don't, you know, through all of these shows and all the things I've done, I know we go on, but how do we live our life here is the important thing. So Shades of the Afterlife, if you're interested, you can check that out. Also, um, more on the, more than a hobby as I've come together with my, my good friends, and we've created something called our Sunday gathering. And I don't wanna call it a church service because if you use the word church, it's, for me, it always has negative connotations because I remember growing up and being forced to go to church and we went to Catholic school and that was quite a bit, but it's just an online gathering, a Sunday gathering where certainly we have music and we have a reading and we have a wonderful speaker that speaks, but as we celebrate life and the afterlife, we have a couple of fabulous mediums who demonstrate mediumship and each week bring through loved ones of people in our online community that have registered. And it's free and it's wonderful and I love it. And each week it reminds me of the bigger picture. You know, I really do believe that each and every one of us are surrounded by love and it's an awful life sometimes. It can be super tough. But if we were all to imagine that we have our loved ones who have passed that are rooting us on, cheering us on, and the day will come that we cross that finish line to life and they'll all be there and we'll realize how much our struggles and our joys and all the things we've experienced really have made a difference. I'm sure I'll be greeted by tons of birds that will say, thank you, Sandra, for feeding me. <laughs> But what is it that you do? What is it that you're doing to keep, not busy, because we're all busy, but just to keep yourself engaged in life? You know, I've got the birds and I've got all the weekly classes that we do. And, you know, I want to say they're hobbies, but it's a wonderful opportunity to just quiet my mind and just be present to the world. Do you go for a walk? 
Do you read? Do you watch a movie? And I'm not just talking about entertaining movies, but movies that inspire. We all need something. Um, we run weekly classes online that are fan freaking tastic. <laughs> On Mondays, we are with Scott Milligan and we had our Monday class yesterday and we get a chance to close our eyes and learn how to quiet our mind and make that space so we can blend and we can be more present to the world around us and the unseen world around us. So the great mediums, they know to practice doing this to quiet their mind and our loved ones come through our imagination. And as crazy as that is, you know, how many times have you known the phone was gonna ring and then you knew who was gonna be on the other end? Or you meet somebody for the first time and you have this feeling, whether you know you love them or the person's a jerk, right? That happens, we all have that intuition. And that's our soul. That's our soul speaking and letting us know how our feelings are our direct connection to that and our imagination. It's pretty interesting how it all works. On Wednesdays, we do a psychic class with Phil and Carrie, Philip Dykes and Carrie McLeod, who are two phenomenal mediums. And they teach us how to pay attention to our feelings. And we all get to practice with a partner in a breakout room tapping soul to soul and doing psychic readings. Now, not psychic like I see your future and we're not looking at a crystal ball, but it's like exercising that intuition, that intuition that knows when the phone's gonna ring and who it's going to be. And you practice that with other people. And it's like, you know things about people that you shouldn't know because you're using your this intuition. And guys, I have to tell you, it's mind blowing to do that because when you have somebody that says, everything you just said about me is 100% accurate or 80% accurate, or you get some of those details about people that you shouldn't know, things they did or maybe what they had for breakfast, I don't know. But when you have those experiences, you know that this can't be it. This life that I'm living can't just be it. If I'm able to know things about their life or know things about their past or know what color car they drive or, you know, that sort of thing. And then on Thursdays, so I'm not just bird watching, on Thursdays we do a class in mediumship and, um, you know, that's talking to dead people, right? So it's not scary or anything because when we die, when our bodies die, we still remain us. You know, we are invisible and it may sound crazy, but science has proved that energy cannot be destroyed. All this snow behind me will melt and then it will get absorbed with sunlight and go into the atmosphere and probably become a cloud. So still same snow, still the same snow, but it's now in a different form. So energy can't be destroyed. So that energy, that's you, that's me, because we are electrical beings. Yes, we do pr produce some kind of wattage, not very high, but we are energetic beings. We do go on. And so on Thursdays, what's so exciting is like we do on Wednesdays with the psychic course, tapping into somebody's that we can talk to. Mediumship, we use that same psychic muscle, but we don't tap into somebody al who's alive. We tap into somebody who's already passed to the hereafter. And I call it the hereafter because it's not way far out in the sky. You know, if we're able to tap in and give accurate information about somebody who's lived, they've got to be right here. So part of me thinks that our world, our life is part of a bigger picture. You know, if you think of an ant living its life and has got his ant hill, and he thinks, this is it. I'm king of the ant hill. <laughs> but meanwhile, there's grass and there's a home and there's a town and there's a state and then there's a country and then there's this whole world that he doesn't know he's not, he's part of but he is, and I think that's the same thing for us humans. But I have had some experiences, guys, that I, 
I'm working with someone on Zoom. We all use Zoom these days and have given some information about grandparents or children or mom or dad or husband or wife. And of course, I'm just a student in training, but I don't just give them information about their loved one. It's like, I actually feel like I'm that person. I've had experiences that I felt like I was hunting in the woods. You know, I don't hunt in the woods, but describing somebody's dad and having them say, yeah, he was a hunter. And then I get this feeling that I was in the army and I get these images that aren't my memories. And I say, I feel like I was in the army. The person says, yes, yes, he was. And then one particular gentleman, I felt this really deep sense of remorse. I felt like I lived, like I never hugged my son. And then I said to the guy, I feel like your dad never hugged you. And the guy says, yeah, you're right. So where does that come from? That's not coming from Sandra's imagination. Now, some of it is, because I've certainly had plenty of times that I'm wrong, but there's been plenty of times that I'm right. So, oh, I hear a donkey or something <laughs> behind me in the distance. I don't know if you can hear that. So I've got my birds. I've got my courses Monday, Wednesday, Thursday. We do some special things. We do medium demonstrations too. and course the Sunday gathering but for each one of us we are souls having a human experience and it gets really hard sometimes to live and life gets very very difficult I know I struggled with finances this past year and I know other people who are doing that as well I know people struggle in relationships. I know what grief does and I know how hard not only grief can feel like it rips apart your life, but if you lose your job, if you lose your health, and of course, if you lose your life, we all go into that grieving mode. It's not an easy road, folks, being a human, but there is something so valuable about having something to do that helps you remember the bigger picture whether it's taking time to meditate, whether it's taking time to go out for a walk, whether it's being hostess with the mostest to hundreds of birds, <laughs> you pick it. But if you're interested, if you're interested in tapping into that soul power that I talk about, the first week of every month, we let new students into our classes and I'm recording this February, oh, I don't even know if it's February 2nd or 3rd, as a matter of fact, but I think it's February 2nd. But tomorrow we start that psychic class if you're interested. And it gives you that foundation, you know, that foundation that can lead into mediumship. And it's super duper fun as well. But if we all have something that can help us remember there's a bigger picture to life, it sure does help. And you're also part of a great community. I found out with our Sunday gatherings, we normally have about two to 300 people that come into our Zoom room, but we also air it on Facebook and we also air it on YouTube. And by the end of the week with replays and people who watch it live, there's about 3000 people in over 20 countries who are watching. Some people have written to me that have gotten reunited with their loved one through one of the medium demonstrations. Other people have heard just whatever it was that's given them a little hope to make it through another week. Don't be fooled by your mind. This mind can be so negative. It can, they say it can, um, our mind can make a heaven out of hell and a hell out of heaven. So I know the past many years, I've had it really good. I've had a good paying job. I've been able to travel. And I was always thinking about what I didn't have. And I was stressed about how much work I had. And yeah, I had money. I had money coming in and that was great. But I didn't feel any peace and I didn't feel any satisfaction. And I ate too much and I drank too much and there was so much stress. So now who am I? I am the mother <laughs> of birds. And I'm sorry I didn't film this a little earlier, but I'm kind of not sorry 
because as many birds as you would see back here, I would probably get, you know, things would land on me here, especially with the black hat on. I think I'm a target. But wherever you are, I just wanted to bring a little boost of Sandra to tell you I'm alive, I'm well. You might have seen me online always putting on the good hair and the makeup just so and all the speaking the right way with all the right things to say. But I just wanted to be me and just be here, show you my bird stuff. I know there's been people who have told me that, <clears throat> excuse me, they've adopted dogs and cats during this time. I love that to not be alone, but also that feeling of being able to give makes such a difference. And you can do that. It doesn't have to be a dog, a cat or a bird, but anytime I tell you that you can make a difference with another person, those random acts of kindness or just picking up the phone and telling somebody you love them or whatever it is you may do. Yes, they get to feel good that they were remembered, but it makes you feel good too. So the only thing I wanna ask is that you don't get caught up in the negativity of your mind <clears throat> because it's a brutal place to be sometimes. Like I said, our minds can make a hell out of heaven and a heaven out of hell. We're very powerful, but I don't think we can do this alone. I think the longer we are alone, the tougher it gets. So the best we have right now can be Maybe seeing one person, maybe not, maybe you're alone, but you've tuned in here, so you do have access to a community. Um, we have a wonderful pa Facebook group called We Don't Die Listeners. If you're not part of that and you just wanna be a part of some cool people, I would say absolutely you would enjoy that. Even if you don't believe in this life after death stuff, so what? You can reach out to me, send me a message under here or an email. I, I got an easy email to remember, sandrachamplain at gmail.com. Sometimes you just need a friend to write to. But life's tough. And if you can, join us on one of our online events. That would be wonderful. Home base for everything is wedontdie.com. And if you click on the tabs up above, you'll see Sunday Gathering, how to register for that. You'll see the online courses. Uh, there's the store section. This Saturday, there's something really big going on. Sonia Rinaldi is a researcher in Brazil, and to me, she has the best evidence of the afterlife. This lady has recorded sounds of nothing, only to have voices of children speaking back to their parents. She started with that, and now what she does is she records um, like static energy I, and all kinds of other things she puts her camera on. And then when she plays the camera, the film back and goes frame by frame, there are pictures of people, people that no longer live this earth. And they are not vague pictures. They're not your mind thinking, oh, maybe there's a face in there. Like how some people see the Virgin Mary on a piece of toast. It's not that. They're real, real pictures. And the one that did it for me the most is she sent me a video and it was a video of static energy that was going into this clear egg shaped thing and you see the static and then all of a sudden the static turns into a picture and then it fades away well that picture was my father and it's not a picture that he took while he was here and it was him we know when we can recognize our loved ones so this saturday she's doing a presentation and she will be showing us the latest work that she's doing. I feel so honored and privileged that between Scott Milligan, Darren Wynn, Sonia Rinaldi, Philip Dykes, and Carrie McLeod, I've got the best team of really good afterlife information and good people with no egos, and they don't charge a lot of money, and we're out to make a difference. Because if we can believe in the afterlife, and we really know that this life isn't it. Boy, does it help us live a better life here. So, I don't think I have anything else. I can't imagine you saw any birds flying by while I'm here, but there have been hundreds earlier. So I'll go check the feeders. That's what I do every morning and every night. Go check them and I clean them up. 
And then mom and I watch from our kitchen window, which is just there. And we get to have our cocktails or our coffee or our meals. And we get to really enjoy. So with that, I hope you're well. Hope to hear from you. Leave your comments. Just say hello. It's been a long time since I've said hello. There's many friends out there that wondered what has happened to me. And we are still alive and well. So much love. Bye, everybody.